Is UCMJ authority over retirees constitutional? Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and in some recent videos, I've talked about the fact that UCMJ authority extends to cover military retirees. And as so often happens, one of you provided an insight into the, the current status of this legal question. You see, there is a court case that has been submitted to the Supreme Court challenging the constitutionality of this authority. The case in question is Stephen Larrabee versus Carlos del Toro. Now, what I want to focus on today is a very interesting nuance that Larrabee's lawyers point out. And that is that while multiple lower courts have upheld the constitutionality of UCMJ authority over retirees, those courts have done so using divergent logic. It's as if they manufacture different reasons, but come to the same conclusion. And in fact, some of these courts explicitly reject the logic of other courts and then turn around and agree with those other courts. Now, before we get too far into this, I want to remind you that within UCMJ, there is an Article 2 that lists all the people who are subject to UCMJ authority. And as I interpret it, there are, I don't know, sort of two reasons that people fall under UCMJ. The first group of people are subject to UCMJ because they are getting paid by the Department of Defense. And the second group of people falls under UCMJ because of their proximity to military forces, either through association or co-location. And then, if we think about that group of people who are getting paid by the Department of Defense, you can break it down further into two subgroups. You've got current military people, folks who are on active duty or in a reserve status, and you've got retirees who are receiving a pension. Now, just to get ahead of this, people who served their initial enlistment and then separated from the military are not subject to UCMJ. In fact, even a member of the Individual Ready Reserve isn't subject to UCMJ unless they're placed on orders or they do some sort of inactive duty training. But before we get too far into this, why does it matter? Well, UCMJ very explicitly and intentionally denies a military service member certain constitutional rights. In particular, this includes the First Amendment when it comes to certain types of free speech and the Fifth Amendment when it comes to grand jury indictment. The issue with the current state of things is that the, the law makes a military retiree subject to UCMJ for their entire life. That is, the veterans who've returned to civilian life and have extremely limited military responsibilities well, they never regain their constitutional rights that they swore to support and defend. And so the question that Larrabee is trying to bring to the Supreme Court is whether or not the Constitution allows military retirees to be tried for offenses by court-martial after they leave active duty. Now, let me be clear. Larrabee did commit a crime. He sexually assaulted a bartender, and he recorded the whole thing on his cell phone. He is not a nice guy, and what's more, he pled guilty to the initial charges, so he recognizes that he committed a crime. The issue is that even though he was a retiree, he was charged under UCMJ. He was sentenced to military confinement, and his characterization of his active duty service was changed as a result of the court-martial. His military service that occurred before he retired and before the incident was recharacterized as dishonorable service. And so the problem kind of breaks down into three parts. First of all, the Supreme Court has never weighed in on the constitutionality of UCMJ being applied to retirees. Instead, SCOTUS has always deferred to lower courts. Second, those lower courts have used a variety of justifications in order to uphold the constitutionality of UCMJ over retirees. 
Sometimes they just defer to the make clauses rule of the Constitution. That's Article 1, Section 8, Clause 14. This clause gives Congress the power to make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces. Sometimes the courts appeal to, like, founding-era British military practices. And sometimes the courts construct an argument that because a military retiree has certain marginal rights, like the right to wear the uniform or be addressed by their rank, that because of these rights, that means that the retiree is still in the land and naval forces. But, as I see it, the real problem with UCMJ authority over retirees is the haphazard application of it. It is not hard to accumulate a list of retired general officers who have violated articles of UCMJ by either speaking out against one president or another, advocating for war crimes, or explicitly and publicly stating that there should be a military coup within the United States. And all of that occurs without any threat of UCMJ action. At the same time, UCMJ seems to get applied to lower-ranking military retirees even when they commit offenses that have absolutely nothing to do with the good order and discipline of the active-duty military. And, in a lot of cases, those crimes that the military retirees commit could be adequately tried under the same local jurisdiction that any U.S. citizen would be tried under. Now, I do not think that the Supreme Court is going to take up Larrabee versus Del Toro. This is just one of literally thousands of cases that get proposed to the Supreme Court, and frankly, I don't think there's enough angst or concern about this to generate interest. But it bears watching because I do believe that the time will come where this issue has to be settled. My suspicion is that eventually there will come a point where UCMJ is used against a large volume of retirees, say Article 84 for breaking quarantine, and that will catalyze this question. Until then, I personally feel like I'm kind of walking a tightrope here. I'm constantly posting these videos that, if the government chose to, they could shut me up and punish me if they saw fit. And at the same time, I feel this moral responsibility to help people navigate their way through this bureaucratic maze. It's kind of frustrating, but ooh, now might be a good time to watch my disclaimer video. 